them running rampant in the world. People don't know what today is. Oh, right. <laughs> People have forgotten what today represents. Where did Easter come from? What is Easter? Where did the bunny come from? And, and the basket and the eggs. And all of the things that has people been out of shape that they're unable to participate in. People mad because their children can't go and collect covered eggs. People are upset because they can't have Easter dinners and they can't go to church and wear their great big satellite hats and their shiny shoes and their new suits and their boyfriend or husband that promised them that they were going to go to church this day for the first time in two years. They're upset about that. They're upset about the idea that they have been accustomed for years and years and years of going to church through that tradition. So I asked the Lord, I was like, well, Lord, are we that blind that we don't understand and we don't recognize and realize what today means? So here's what the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me that individuals are where they are because they choose to be where they are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Individuals have an understanding of what they understand because they choose to understand that. All right. So if you're worried about what I got on and not what I got in, All right. we got a problem. All right. <laughs> because you can be the Sadducee or the Pharisee and have your head covered and have your bell on and have your belt on and have your dangling bells and all of that and still be treacherous mm -hmm. and not know what's going on in the spirit of Christ. So if you're worried about the attire of the pastor, the attire of the evangelist, the attire of the apostle, as opposed to what's in them, then that's a bigger problem that you have other than what he has on or what she has on. Amen. So I said to the Lord, Lord, how do we reach the people and remind the people of who you are, especially during this time? So he said, well, why don't you just have a conversation with the people and ask a couple of questions and see if we can't get them back on track? Because, see, this is supposed to be getting our attention now. Yeah. So life as we know it is no more. All right. So the world around us has been affected mm -hmm. because the world around us is infected. But the infection has always been there. All right. But the infection is there in the form of sin. So now the infection is there in a tangible way, and we can see the infection in the form of the virus. But the infection has always been here. Well, that's right. So what do we celebrate? What is Easter? What is the resurrection? Good. Are we celebrating Easter or are we celebrating the resurrection? For years as a small child, you know the story. We've been groomed as children from the time that we come up from knee high to a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Easter egg hunt, go to church for the Easter, the, the Easter play so you can say the Lord Jesus loved me and he's the one he died for me. All the little things little kids learn how to say for the Easter program, the Easter program. Shiny new patent leather shoes for the girls. Brand new loaf of penny loaf of boys with Vaseline on them. Creased bridges. And that first time I had a neck towel. And I couldn't <laughs> fault and kick the screen because you didn't want to go to hell. Because you had to look your very best. Uncles ain't never been, ain't been to church in two years come to church. Grandma said, you coming to church today. Amen. All over the land and country, this tradition has been disrupted. Mm. But what are we celebrating? The sunrise service? Up, grandma and them up, three o'clock in the morning. Ham, eggs, grits, biscuits, <laughs> coffee, bacon, eggs, cheese, tomatoes, apples. <laughs> so you can come and participate in the sunrise service. All right. And you get your little pen put on you. And you get stuck with your little poems on your little pen. All of these things that Easter has represented. From the time we were little. 
But they knew something that we didn't know. They knew that Easter was more than the bunny and the eggs in yes, the basket. Yes. Well, we've been a part of these traditions for centuries. We grew up with them. Mm -hmm. Our children in this generation doesn't get to see it as much, but it is still making millions and billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Even candy, now they're putting masks on bunnies. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to bring a few things to your attention today, and I want to ask you the question that the Lord said to talk about. What are you celebrating? Do you even know what you're celebrating? As an adult, these are questions that we should ask ourselves from time to time. What am I doing here? What am I all about? What is the Lord doing in my life? What am I participating in? What kind of mess am I mixed up in? Mm. No different than today. What are you celebrating? Mm -hmm. Do you know why you celebrate Easter? Well, versus celebrating the resurrection. Right. Well, let me talk to you a little bit about the differences. What exactly is Easter according to tradition? Easter is a very important holiday during the year. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, it signifies the end of Lent in the Christian religion. Mm -hmm. It is the 40 days before the period of which, for religious reasons, people have stopped doing particular things. Mm -hmm. They fasted for 40 days. They stopped doing things that they enjoyed. They gave up something in observance of Christ and in remembrance of his sacrifice. Well. They did this as an act of devotion and self-discipline, reflecting new beginnings and the resurrection of a crucified Christ. That is what Easter means if you're going to look at what Easter means. Why not call it Resurrection Sunday then? Mm -hmm. The Bible spoke one time about Easter. And in the time that the Bible mentioned Easter, it explained it like this, as the resurrection. Well, Everything was about Christ. Well, Nothing was about a bunny or a rabbit <laughs> or any eggs. But I'll show you how it was introduced. Mm -hmm. Easter is not the same thing as the resurrection. Well. These are two different events, two different ideologies, two different thought patterns. There's so much information floating around in the Bible, so much information floating around on the internet, so much information floating around in the minds of people about what Easter means and what it should mean and the book's been written about it. You would spend your whole life trying to figure it out as opposed to going to the headmaster. Well. Godly wisdom and godly understanding dictates and guides us back to godly truth and what we should see that Jesus said on the matter because he addressed everything while he was here for his short time. Mm -hmm. Christians believe in the resurrection. Well, just as much as Christians believe in Easter. How did this happen over the course of human history? Well, little, little bitty gods, mm. little bitty gods with a little G, mm. came claiming, guys claiming that they were the true prophet. They were the last prophet. And, and, and they were the true speaker and mouthpiece of God. All of these people that came before and came after were coming to do one thing. Promote the kingdom of the enemy. Well, Mark said in 16, 1 through 6, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and the mother of Jesus was lonely, had bought sweet spices, and day that night they might come to anoint him. Now we're talking about Jesus already being dead right here. Well, how do we get to Jesus being dead and how do we get to Easter and how do we get to all of these things? Well, look, people have mixed up and distorted what Easter meant for such a long time. We just go with the flow. It's about what you got on. You can, I can't go to church because I ain't got no 
suit. Well, if you use the excuse of you can't go to church because you ain't got no suit, you might not never go to church. Well, because you might not never buy a suit. Mm -hmm. So let me talk to you a little bit about some things that we're going to understand to be true. Today, many people are celebrating Easter. Mm -hmm. The virus has people doing some different things. Okay. People can't do some of the things that we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Can't wear the suits. Can't wear the hats. They can't come and show off the outfit. They can't come and show off the little shape that they've been working all of this time to do to come to church for Easter for the one time that they're going to come this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can't do it today because now something different is happening in the land. Mm -hmm. They got their hairstyle all did up. They went and they waited and they, and they sweated and they slept up with their pillow propped up and, <laughs> and they didn't get their hair touched so nothing would be out of place when they left the beauty salon. Women know what I'm talking about. They go get the hat done, and you better not touch the head, and they won't lay the head on the pillow. <laughs> they'll sleep sitting up in the chair, and they'll put the Erica Badu wrap around it and make sure that everything is in place. All right. How do we get to this place of misunderstanding? It's a simple tactic and plan of the enemy. It was called assimilation. Assimilation is when you take something identical. Or you take something similar mm -hmm. and you replace it with something else so that the people around don't get upset that you are disrupting what they got going on. All right. So you mean to tell me that during the olden days, during the times of Christ, before the reformations, when they were still worshiping idols, when the disciples decided that they were going to go into a pagan community, they went into the pagan community to bring Christ. Mm -hmm. But they didn't replace all of the pagans, holidays and rituals. They incorporated Christ in so that they could win over. That's assimilation. They allowed the local residents to hold on to a lot of their practices, Good. gods, and rituals. Right. Ashtaroth, which is where Easter is derived from. It's where we go when we get Easter. It is indicative of an idol god that never was brought down because beliefs were incorporated and they took a little bit of this and mixed it with a little bit of that so that they could get something palatable for the people so that they could remain amongst them to try to win souls. They wanted to put a Christian flavor on pagan ideas. That's assimilation. They allowed these rituals to remain in place, but they even knew something that the sinners knew. Something different was happening. The word says a little leaven. Leaven is the whole loaf. So just a little price well. would affect the whole pagan society. Maybe the society would become infected with the Jesus virus. And they would change from their pagan ways. And they would change from their rituals. So this is why these pagan rituals were allowed. Assimilation. Remember that word. So listen. I want to bring something to your attention. If you've got 1% of the most volatile acid or virus in the world, 1%, and you put it in 99% of water, Well, I bet you got 100% of a poisonous disease when it's over. Mm -hmm. If you take 1% of Jesus and put Jesus in 99% of a sinful world, well, I bet you have 100% of Jesus well, in a sinful world. Mm -hmm. That's what the resurrection was about. 2 Corinthians says, Wherefore come from amongst them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. How were the disciples going to make sure that the people understood this if they were pagans? Well. They had to go in. They had to mingle with them. 
They had to talk to them. See, because they already knew about their gods because they lived in the same land with people where pagan rituals and gods was the norm. Well. It was normal for people from the mount. They built the golden calf when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. So the pagans and idols, they knew about it. But they were trying to reach a people bigger than themselves. Yeah. Easter is a pagan term. Derived from the god Ashtaroth, or the female version, Esterate, in Assyrian form in the Old Testament. This can be found in 1 Kings 11 and 5 and 33. Ashtaroth, Esther, Easter, was known as the goddess of love and increase. What represents love with the bunny? The multiplication of the bunnies having babies like rabbits. Wow. Increase. That's how distorted and twisted the minds of individuals were. But remember, these are pagans. These are heathens. And these are Christians incorporating Christian beliefs into pagan ideologies. Well. She was the God that was worshipped for fertility. What's more fertile than a rabbit? Other than a rat. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> she was celebrated on the day of the vernal equinox, which is the day that are equal to the hours of the day of the night, hence the equinox, or in the beginning of spring, for those of us with in layman terms. The celebration began now. See, because you had to start 40 days out. Because at the end of 40 days, something was supposed to happen and transpire. And then on that Thursday, ooh, I'm get slow down. something was supposed to happen. So the traditions were in place for a reason. In the pagan ritual, Easter, they would take the egg. And they would dye the egg. They would dye it red. Why would they dye the egg red? To symbolize the blood. That's where the dyed egg came from. Well. There had to be a symbol for them to connect to. Remember, you've got Christians who are trying to reach pagans with pagan thoughts and pagan minds. So now they need to take something simple. Remember, the Lord said, I take the foolish things to confound the wise. Mm -hmm. So now they decided that they were going to take eggs and dye the eggs red to represent the blood of Christ. The more beautiful the eggs, it was believed, the more it pleased the God. Well, the dyed eggs in the different colors. They would be granted more favor, more increase. The connection. Look at the connection. Mm -hmm. The rabbit is vital because in the celebration we talk a lot about fertility. Hence, again, multiply like rabbits. Increase. Increase. We always want an increase from the Lord. You say, Pastor, well, what does that have to do? What does that have to do with the resurrection? Well, if you, if you bear with me for a moment, I'm going to get that. But that's how the bunny got in. So that's how your bunny got in. That's how your eggs got in. Now, how can we make money on it? Oh. Mm -hmm. See, because <clears throat> the people of the temple were provided for with tithes and offerings. The Romans collected taxes. How did the pagans get paid? The pagans got paid by selling stuff, by bartering. They didn't just sell goats and chickens. They sold food and they sold trinkets and they sold carbons and they sold statues. We're talking about a society of people. Even though they were pagans, they still went to work. Yeah. They still had families. But isn't it amazing to see that these subtle disruptions these subtle deceptions are all connected to the resurrection. Mm -hmm. yeah. The misinterpretations and the misconceptions that we have about Easter, our parents and grandparents did the best that they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. And they passed it on to us, and then in turn we did the best with what we had. But what should have happened to them should have happened to us. We were supposed to build upon the foundation that was laid. Well, Not just leave the, the foundation look dormant mm -hmm. without doing any repairs or work to it. We were supposed to build to it. 
add to it. Do some research. We were supposed to study for ourselves. We were supposed to get an understanding for ourselves. We were supposed to do a, a certain amount of work built upon that foundation that we have yet to do because we don't want to study to show ourselves proof. We want the pastor to keep baby burdens. We want him to put it in our mouth, chew it up. All we got to do is swap. <laughs> we don't want to study. We just want to hear it. We don't want to research. We just want somebody to tell us what to look for. But we want the benefits of what they're talking about. But we don't want to do no work for it. Here's the sad truth of the matter. Some people don't want to hear this. Wherever you are, are you here today because this is a part of your tradition? Are you here today because you want to be here today? Are you here today simply because you promised somebody that you would be here today? Or wherever you are today. Well, I'm going to join you online today. Same thing as being there. See, because you can send the word and the word can heal them all. See, we've got this thing all twisted and all distorted. Well, we can't use social media and social platforms to have church now. All over the land and the country, they're proving that to be false. Because you can't. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Jesus spent the last hours of his life before the crucifixion. In several places in Jerusalem. He was still about his father's business. He started out that evening in the upper room. In the southwest corners of different places of Jerusalem. Well, At the last supper he told his disciples that his body and his blood were to be given for them. Mm -hmm. He had conversation with them. He interacted and mingled with them. He sucked with them. He fellowshiped with them. He even told them, one of you here is going to betray me. Well. Cut them off God so bad they got to murmuring and complaining and arguing. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Even the deceiver and the betrayer himself. Lord, is it I? And the Lord's response was, thou hast said it. <laughs> thou hast said it. Yeah. <laughs> together. So some things were leading up to the resurrection because remember they'd already been fasting for 40 days. They'd already been doing things for 40 days to prepare for the prophecy to begin to come into fruition. Mm -hmm. For the plan for Jesus' life to begin to take full effect. Mm -hmm. For his time on earth was drawing nigh. That's right. Matthew 26 and 29 gives us that account of he went on outside of the city into the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, there was conversation going on. Jesus wanted to be alone with his father. Mm -hmm. In that time, Jesus began to reflect of his natural humanity. Because remember, this is God incarnate wrapped in flesh. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lord, if there be any other way, let this cup. Pass from my mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, not my will, mm -hmm. but thy will mm -hmm. be done. All right. yes, this is what the resurrection is all about. It's about the events that transpired before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. We ain't talked about a bunny yet. Mm -hmm. We ain't talked about an egg yet. But we know the origins of where they came from. Are you here or wherever you are today celebrating the fact that nearly 2,000 years ago on a Thursday night after praying under so much pressure mm -hmm. that his sweat literally began to ooze and drip from his forehead. Mm -hmm. Oozing and dripping out of his body. Literal sweats and blood because of the earnest prayer. We don't know what that prayer was. Mm -hmm. That's but it was on our behalf. Mm -hmm. That sweating of blood, we know is something that's real because doctors today call it hemodrosis. Mm -hmm. It causes the body to become severely painful mm -hmm. and sweat blood. Many well-known doctors say 
If you want to know what it felt like, imagine the worst sunburn or the worst toothache that you've ever had and multiply that by 2,000. Mm. That's what Jesus felt like when the drops of blood were oozing from his head, praying on our behalf. Mm. After praying mm. and after that time in the garden with his father, the prophecy and the plan for his preordained life was beginning to come to fruition. Right. Events were still transpiring even while he was in the garden praying. Mm -hmm. See, because the betrayer right. still had his, his act to follow. Uh -huh. Act one, mm -hmm. scene two, was going on while Jesus was praying even for him. Yes. Yes. He was praying for Uncle Ho. Well. Anti-crack, cousin drug addict, sister rapist, brother rapist. He was praying for everybody, yes. brother pedophile. Everybody he was praying for. And the deceiver and the betrayer was well. out still doing his bidding. Mm. Then there came a time, once he was done praying in the garden, that the betrayer came back with the soldiers. Mm -hmm. And he had made a pact with them mm -hmm. for some little measly pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. The one that I kiss upon the cheek is, is the one you want. See, because they didn't even know who he was. Well, <laughs> Still didn't have any idea. Even after all of the miracles and everything that he had done, they still didn't know who he was. They didn't want, they couldn't see him. He was hidden behind the veil of glory. They still, so they didn't have any idea. He could have been amongst them all. He was amongst them the whole time and they didn't even know who he was. Mm -hmm. And that lying, deceiving betrayer said, he's going to receive me. I'll give you a sign. Mm -hmm. The one that I go and I kiss mm -hmm. is he that you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was going to arrest it. And brought back to the palace of the high priest. Mm -hmm. Where he was questioned by Annas. Mm -hmm. A former high priest. And Caiaphas. Annas' son-in-law. Afterwards he was then tried by the Sanhedrin court. And found guilty of blasphemy. Yes. Proclaiming himself to be the son of God. The trial went on. It was a mock trial. Just like many of our brothers and sisters today. Go through a mock trial. Yes. Trumped up charges. Untruths still got to go through the process. That's right. Since only the Romans were able to execute criminals, they had to send in the Romans mm -hmm. because they couldn't do it. Even after his trial, even after the trumped up charges, even after being betrayed, they still couldn't get him. Mm -hmm. They had to send him to the proper authorities mm -hmm. to get permission to kill him. Well. So they sent him to Rome to Pontius Pilate. And the Atonia Fortress, one of the strongest Roman jails that it was. Pilate said, I don't find no fault in this man. What did he do? I am not going to be a part of this kangaroo court. I wash my hands up. Send it back where it comes from. I don't want no person. Ain't nothing good going to come from this. I'm paraphrasing, but Pontius Pilate said, I don't want no parts of this. Send him back to King Herod, who returned him back to Pontius Pilate. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. Pontius Pilate then, feeling the pressure, submitting to the pressure of the people, submitting to the pressure of the king, mm -hmm. submitting to the pressure, says, let's crucify him. Well. To satisfy the people. Not knowing that these things had been prophesied yeah. already. That's right. Pontius Pilate says, We gotta kill him because the people want him, they want him dead. But we got two criminals here. I'll set one free. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want me to set free? This one that is a certified killer, robber, rapist. Or this one, who called himself the king, the son of God. Kill this one. Kill him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Set the 
other one free. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what the law is? Beating, mm -hmm. flogging, preparing for death. It was finally led out of the city to the walls of Calvary, mm -hmm. to Golgotha. But along the way, I want you to imagine with me for a minute being arrested after having dinner, being dragged through the streets while the members of your inner circle can do nothing, mm -hmm. beaten all night long. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 50 and 6 says, I offered my back to those who beat me, mm -hmm. my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from my inner spirit. His beards were pulled out in handfuls of hair. Mm -hmm. They punched him in the face. Mm -hmm. They spit on him. Mm -hmm. They threw stones at him. Mm -hmm. There was a total disregard for who he was as even a man. Mm -hmm. The disconnection from life that was emanating from his body, much less being the son of God wrapped up in the flesh, they didn't, they didn't see it. They had a mob mentality. Mm -hmm. We know this to be true. Emmett Till and many others have suffered at the hands of the mob mentality. Even today, we have that mob mentality, that, that same mentality that allows a man to be hung and beaten and then set on fire. We recognize it and we understand this is what they did to mm. God incarnated in the flesh, wrapped up as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Spat on him, mocked him. He never said a word. They struck him with their fists and others slapped him. They blindfolded him and said, prophesy, tell us who it was. Mm -hmm. Who hit you? You're claiming to be the son of God. You know it all. You all know it. Then tell us who just hit you upside your head. Mark 26 and 67. Mark 14 and 65. I get that. What are you celebrating today? Are you celebrating Esau? Or are you celebrating the resurrection of Christ? They beat him with a flagellum. A flagellum is a whip about three feet long. At the end of it is metal bars. Halfway up, along with the metal bars, were sheep's bones that had been sharpened to the point. And every time one of them come down across your back, it would rip off flesh. And it would open you up. They would dig into the flesh and beat him and beat him and beat him. They made a crown of thorns, three-inch thorns, smashed it on his forehead. They began to puncture him in his head, which was swollen, eyes swollen, water and blood dripping from his face. He was disfigured and unrecognizable as a human, as a man, is what the word said. They made him carry a cross yes. that weighed upward of 80 pounds on this battered and beaten body. Mm -hmm. After being beaten all night long, after all of the blood that he lost, the word of God says his mother didn't even recognize him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She looked upon him and she screamed and cried out. Thank God that Simon decided that he would interject even if it meant that they would kill him and he decided that he would go and bear just a little bit of the burden mm -hmm. and lift his cross even if it was for a moment to give him some relief. On top of the hill at Calvary, the mountain of Golgotha, the place of the skull, they laid this battered, beaten body down onto this cross by the way, which was the way that they killed criminals. They crucified them. This wasn't the first time. Jesus wasn't the first one who had been crucified. Mm -hmm. But the significance of Jesus being crucified and the significance of the cross means something to us much more now, mm -hmm. considering. Mm -hmm. They laid him down and they took six to eight inch spikes and they sent them in his hand. Mm -hmm. well. They drove it in one hand. Severing his nerves. 
his hand and drew. They put a spike in the other hand and slammed the nail into it and severed that nerve and that hand drew. And put his feet together and slammed nails into his feet. His feet drew up. Even with all of this happening, he never made a word. The pain had to be unimaginable. It had to be excruciating, like that toothache or that sunburn that we alluded to earlier. Even in this amount of pain, after being hoisted up into the air under his own weight, punching him in his side. Mm -hmm. They still threw stuff at him. They cast lock over his clothes. They stripped him. Had him bath. Mm -hmm. Even during this whole process, mm -hmm. he never said a word. Well. Then he entered into a conversation with the man next to him. Mm -hmm. Another prisoner who had also been crucified. He says, Lord, I'm guilty. I know I'm guilty. Why are you here? I sense, I'm paraphrasing, don't hold me to it. I sense that you are a holy man, you're a righteous man. I deserve what I'm getting, but you don't deserve this. If you be who you say you are, To the temple, to the sepulchre, 
when they laid his body, they saw the stone was rolled away. Well, well. Now, well. it was a great stone, so maybe, maybe the gods moved it. You know, there was all of these different scenarios running around that the gods stole the body, da da da. Not all this foolishness, these conspiracy theories, but inside of the tomb, when they got there, yeah. Say that. there was a man sitting there that was glowing. Oh. And they likened him into an angel. He must have been an angel of regalia, so they had to recognize him as being an angel. Mm -hmm. He says, what you're looking for, <laughs> the dead for, in the tomb. Uh -huh. I'm paraphrasing. Why are you coming in here looking for somebody that's dead? Ain't nobody in here dead. He's risen. Don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Is it Jesus of Nazareth that you seek? He who was crucified, he's not here. He is risen. Behold, look at the place where they laid it. He rose again, church. He did it for you. Yes. He did it for me. Mm -hmm. He did it for mama them, cousin them, mm -hmm. sister them, oh, auntie them, right. uncle them. Sure did. He did it for the ignorant. He did it for the wise. <laughs> he did it for the Sadducees. He did it for the Pharisees. He did it for the Muslims. He did it for everybody. All of humanity. Yeah. That's who he did it for. Yes, he did. Even in the ignorance, mm -hmm. he did it for them. Well, didn't make a difference about who they were or what they represented. He died for them all. Yes. Coming back like he said that he would. Church, I'm here today on Kingdom Business to remind you of the wonder working power oh, yes. of a resurrected God. Yes. Yes, yes. One that can raise a dead situation, oh, yes. a dead circumstance, mm -hmm. and bring it back to life as you know it. Yes. I'm here on kingdom business to let you know that whatever you need from God can be resurrected today mm -hmm. because it was already done. Oh, he yes. doesn't have to die again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know about colored eggs and chocolate bunnies. I don't know about Easter baskets and shiny shoes, but I'm letting you know today about the resurrection of the living Christ. Yeah, say that. The living Christ. Say that. See, I don't have a problem with you with tattoos. I don't have a problem with you with Timberland boots on and hoodies. I don't have a problem with you with whatever you got on. Whoever you are, I don't have a problem with you. I only have a problem with sin affecting you. Yes. Well, yes. well, well. Jesus gave up his life for all humanity. Mm -hmm. All sinners. All right. So that must mean that he saw farther into the future. To cover me under the blood. Mm -hmm. If I accept that gift. That's it. Well, well. That's it. I have a choice in the matter. Yes. Well. If I choose to accept it. And live by those commandments. Yes. Then I'm covered under that yes. blood. Yes. If not. Oh well. I'm here today. To tell you about the one and only true and living God. That knew not sin, had no sin in him. But he became sin so that we might have a right to the truth. Like, what do you say? He became that for us. Mm -hmm. well, he was that substitute mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Well, he took on all of the deformities. And all of the epilepsies and the HIVs and the COVID-19s 
and, and, and the heart of hearings and, and the diabetes and, and the heart disease. He took all of that, all of the infirmity and all of the mental illness and all of, even his physical body that couldn't even break his bones. They tried to break his bones. They stabbed him. He took all of that on for us. Well. So that we didn't have to. And then when we go through a little bit of something, we freak out and panic. <laughs> it hurts so bad. You think that hurt? Mm. Mm. I'm here today, <laughs> church. On Kingdom Business. Celebrating the Alpha oh. and the Omega. Mm -hmm. The beginning mm -hmm. and the end. The first yes. and the last. Mm -hmm. I'm here today celebrating the resurrection of the Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. The King of Kings. Yes. Yes. The hope of hope. Yes. I'm here today celebrating the resurrection of the great I am oh, yes. that I am. All right. I'm here today talking about what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. All right. And I'm talking about what are you celebrating? Mm. <clears throat> are you celebrating Easter? Are you celebrating the resurrection? Mm -hmm. the resurrection? I'm closing church with this. Luke 24 and 5. Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? Do you remember what he said? Do you remember what he said to you in the room? Yeah. Do you remember what he said to you? Oh, yeah. On the bed of affliction? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember what he said to you in the upper room? Oh, yeah. You remember what he said to you in the upper room? Do you remember what he said to you through your tears mm -hmm. in the upper room? Do you remember what he said to you when you were sitting at the dinner table? Oh, yeah. Do you remember what he said to you? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what he said to you? Do you remember the promise that he made to you? Thank you, God. Do you remember? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Mm -hmm. He must be crucified. Mm -hmm. That on the third day, he will be raised again. Yes, sir. Then they remembered his words. Do you remember what the Lord promised you? Thank you, God. <clears throat> if his word will not return to him void. And it will accomplish what he said it would do. He said he was going to get up, and he did. He said that you can have it, and you can. Thank you, God. He said that you are who you are, and you are. Yes, yes. All because he was resurrected. Yes, yes. That's what today is about. Mm. I ain't talking about no bunnies and eggs. All right. Mm. The Bible tells us that we are all dead to our sin. Mm. The good news is you don't have to stay there. You can be resurrected in him. Resurrected with him. Because if you live for him, you got to be willing to die for him. If you died with him on the cross, you must have been resurrected with him from the tomb. You got to be. Because that's what his word promised. Don't be afraid, church. Just remember what the Lord said to you. He died for our sins. He didn't stay in the grave. He didn't die for nothing. He got up out of that grave to show us the power of his word. Well, well. Even during the three days, Something was happening. Mm -hmm. He went down into the lower part. Come on, come on. And he preached uh -huh. to give opportunity mm -hmm. to those that had been deceived well, well. and died before uh -huh. he resurrected his glorified body. Mm -hmm. And he let, let them out of captivity. Mm -hmm. Well. Something was going on that we couldn't see. Come on. Then to make it even better for us, several people saw it. Mm -hmm. Walking down the road. Oh, ain't that Jesus? Is that Jesus? I don't believe that Jesus. He, in order for me to believe 
said, Jesus, I'm going to have to touch the hole in his hand. In order for me to believe that Jesus, I got to touch the side where it was here. He told the lady on the road, the woman on the road that saw him, go tell my disciples that I live. Releasing his authority to win and to preach. Go tell the word. So now his death and resurrected those old thoughts about what people say women can and can't do. They did already carry the word for nine months in the womb. Yeah. Now they didn't birth the word. Now Jesus then gave them the authority to carry the word. Yes. Well, Erasing Paul's teachings yeah. and Paul's thoughts on the map. I say, well, you talking about what Paul said? Well, Paul said, well, what did Jesus say? Uh, yeah, all right. I remember what Jesus said. You gonna tell me? You gonna raise up to me by what Paul said? And I'm gonna count on you one more. What did Jesus say? Yeah. Did, was was Paul following Jesus or was Jesus following Paul? Come on now. Right now. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Mm. All right. Jesus came up out of the grave with all power, all, power. all, power. all authority. And he came and gave it to the woman mm -hmm. first. Well, come on. Ignorant men miss it. Well, because they don't want to see it. Come on. They want to stay in the ignorance. The first conversation that he had in with a natural person outside of the father was with a woman. Mm -hmm. And he said, Go tell them I live, mm -hmm. meet me here. Meet me at the upper room. Meet me in this location. Go ahead. And when she went to bring the good news, she must be tripping. What you been drinking? Lord, she got the sunstroke. She got the fever. She must have the virus. It's affecting her mind. Come on. I'm not going to believe it. Let's I see the hole in the hand. I'm not going to believe it. Let's I. Uh oh. Come on. Jesus shows up. Come on. On the scene. Alive, yes, well, yes. walking mm -hmm. in a resurrected but new body. Yeah, well, yeah. Body still had holes in it. Come on. Thomas well. said, Lord, is it you? Uh -huh. Jesus already didn't discern his thoughts. Hell, I say it. <laughs> say it. Come on over here and touch it, Thomas. Remember, he's not here. 
he has risen just as he said he would. Mm -hmm. Come quickly and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he is risen yes. from the dead. Yes. Yes. And is going ahead of you mm -hmm. into Galilee. Yes. There you will see him. Uh, yes. All right. Yes. I'm here to tell you that Jesus has been resurrected mm. and is on his way ahead of you <laughs> to your Galilee. Yes. And there yes. you will see him. Yes. You will see him in your situation. You. you will see him in your circumstances. Yes. You will see him in your relationships. Yes. You will see him in your finances. Mm. You will see him in your body. Mm. You will see him in your head. You will see him because yes. he didn't work ahead of you. Because he resurrected yes. like he said he would. Yes. That's the difference mm. between the Easter bunny and the resurrection. Right. <laughs> That's the difference between the chocolate eggs and the shed blood of Christ. Right. That's the difference between yes. fact mm. and fiction. Yes, he is risen yes, today. Yes. And I thank God. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. 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 Church, I want to pray over you right now yes. while I feel this. Yes, sir. Father God, we thank you. Thank yes, you. We thank you for dying for us. Yes, thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've been doing on the cross thank so you. that we didn't have to. We thank you that you took on thank all manner of sickness and disease. Yes, we thank you that you took on all manner of hurt and mental anguish. Thank we you. thank you that you took it on your body. We thank you, Lord, thank that you allowed them to do to you what they did to you on our behalf. Yes, Lord. And now, Father God, we come thank to you, you saying, Lord, we love you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we ask you right now under the sound of my voice, Father yes, God, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Those who haven't turned to you, forgive them, Lord. For they know not what they do. Give us the opportunity here, Lord, to gather in more sheep. Give us the opportunity to see your promises be fulfilled in this earth, Father God. Make this ministry bust at the seam. Release them from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Lord, cover them under your blood that need a word from you right now, Father God. Yes, God. Put them in this direction. Yes, Lord. Put them in the direction of the cross. Father, give us the opportunity yes, to do what you did. Yes, yes, Lord. Let us allow them the opportunity to mm -hmm. see you mm -hmm. resurrected as we have. Yes, God. And Father God, we know that you are able to do it. Thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance, Father God, for your promises thank you. for us. We pray for the sinner yes. as well as the saved. Yes. Touch them in their hearts and minds. Yes. Touch them in their relationships and finances. Yes. Touch them in their bodies. Touch them where they need a touch. Yes. Give them what they need, Father God. In those times of uncertainty, be yes. their certain. Yes. Give them hope. Reignite a fire of a hundred yes. hope. Yes. Give them what they need, Lord, yes. Lord. To let them know that you are who you said you yes. are. And that you can do Yes, what you yes. said that you could do. Yes. Thank you, God. We thank you in advance. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Lord, we give your name glory. Yes, yes. Lord. We give your name honor. Yes, yes. And we give your name praise. Yes, yes. And they all said, Amen. 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 And amen again. Amen. Amen. Church, I've given to you what the Lord has released for me to give to you on today. Jesus. And I'm thankful to God for each and every one of you. I am thankful to God that he chose me and has allowed me the opportunity to remain above ground yes, because there's work to do. Well, Let's be about our father's business. Let's get this work done. Let's bring these bodies and these souls in. Let's teach them. Let's guide them. Let's lead them to the cross. Yes. Well, let's assist them any way we can because right now we are resurrected in him. Mm -hmm. well, and everything that we do is operating under the miracle of the resurrection. Yes, Lord. Be careful what you say. Yes. Be careful what you speak. Mm -hmm. Guard your words because life and death are in the power of the tongue. You can have whatsoever you ask or desire if you doubt not and believe. Amen. 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 Amen.